After review, the call is confirmed. The batter was hit by the pitch. The Los Angeles Angels lose their challenge. You all just witnessed something that has never happened in the history of baseball. Very rarely in the year 2022 are we going to have moments where we say, hey, that's a first because baseball has been played for so long, but for the very first time, an umpire had to announce what the replay result was. And even though it's a very minor change, it adds drama to the game of baseball, and we need more of that. I love drama. Drama sells. But anyways, what's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. If this is your first time on the channel, we do this every single day, so don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. As you can tell by the title, we have a breaking trade. A lot of casual fans are thinking to themselves, why did the Rays do this? This is very stupid on Tampa Bay's part, so we're going to break it down in just a moment because I'm going to try and save the day for Tampa Ray fans because honestly, on paper, yeah, it's not good. So if you're a Tigers fan or just a baseball fan in general, remember to use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order. The regular season tickets are getting expensive, so anytime I can save you guys some money, I love doing that. Now, before we get into that trade, I do want to talk about a few stories from the AL East. Chris Sale, I feel so bad for Boston Red Sox fans, but Tanner Houck is going to be a beast. They still have Evaldi. They had Chris Sale, but unfortunately with a cracked rib, he is going to be out for the next two to three months. So if you're a Boston fan, fan let me know in the comment section down below do you believe in the back end of your rotation because I'm trying to think about it after Nathan Evaldi and Tanner Houck I don't know who is in that rotation so please let me know your thoughts down below also a former AL East player Pedro Severino he used to be the catcher for the Orioles he is now with the Brewers he has been suspended for 80 games now his reasoning as to why he had to take this specific drug is because he was trying to help out his wife his wife was struggling with fertility issues so they're trying to have a family they weren't really successful in that a doctor recommended something and unfortunately it got him suspended for 80 games which really sucks and lastly before we talk about about the trade and break it down two former Yankees players Todd Frazier and Greg Bird Frazier is deciding to hang it up he is a former home run derby champion and a two-time all-star one of the most exciting third basemen of my lifetime because it was so unexpected and the fact that he won the derby in Cincinnati I believe it was in Cincinnati the team that he was playing for that was a lot of fun and Greg Bird the former Yankee is now a current Yankee. He is back, and I have PTSD because of that Andrew Miller home run. All right, well, it's a minor league deal, so he might not even make the team this year. Breaking news, Austin Meadows, the 2019 All-Star and a guy that almost had 30 home runs a season ago has been traded to the Detroit Tigers in exchange for an infielder by the name of Isaac Paredes. Let's go ahead and break this down piece by piece because I know a lot of Rays fans are expecting me to try and justify it. I'm going to do my best. So the Tigers are getting 27-year-old outfielder slash DH Austin Meadows. Back in 2019 when he was a first-time All-Star, he had a one 44 OPS plus and everyone was clowning on the Pirates for trading this guy because they all knew that he was going to be a stud. He was amazing in 2019. He has somewhat regressed since then. He had a 315 on base percentage in 2021, which is good, but it's not the best. However, you just cannot argue with 29 doubles, 27 home runs, and a 111 OPS plus with 100 plus RBIs a season ago in 2021. One note I do want to make for all of you Tigers fans, this only really happened because Riley Green broke his foot. He was probably going to get called up with Spencer Torkelson, and unfortunately, the defense is going to suffer because Austin Meadows has a negative 16 defensive run saves DRS since 2018 so that suggests that he is an awful defender but that bat will play uh also one thing I want to mention is he has the chance to be playing with his younger brother Parker Meadows is the 20th ranked prospect for Detroit so if he can get called up and play with his big bro because the Tigers actually have control over Meadows for the next three years that's gonna be exciting so basically I just told you Rays fans that you traded away your all-star left-handed slugger who once upon a time had a 144 OP plus and last year almost had 30 doubles and 30 home runs so why would you trade him for an infielder that has been a bust at the major league level let's try and justify it so in this trade the Tampa Bay Rays got a competitive B draft pick I'm gonna keep it real I have no idea what that means but it's for the year 2022 and also they got 23 year old Isaac Paredes he is a classic 4A player what I mean by that is he's too good for triple-a but he is not good enough for the big leagues. And I say that because I've seen this dude live. You know, the Tigers play the Guardians quite often. And in his first 60 big league games, he has a 593 OPS, which 
is horrific, but in AAA and AA combined, he had an 845 OPS plus last year because he has elite on base kills in the minors. So from what I've seen, he's not a good defender. He's struggling in the big leagues, but he's too good for AAA. But the one thing that we know about the Tampa Bay Rays is they somehow figure out for A players. The latest example that I can think of, Yandy Diaz, he was all right back when he was with Cleveland. They traded him to Tampa Bay and he became a pretty decent player. And I expect the same with Paredes. Now I'm not saying he's gonna be a generational type talent, but can he be a solid 15, 20 home run guy with a 343, 50 on base percentage. I mean, that's his ceiling and he can actually reach that if the Rays can figure it out somehow. Now, if you're a Rays fan, let me try and put the bow on this real quick. So the Rays are notoriously infamous for never spending money and this is exactly why they moved on because Josh Lowe is a 24 year old monster and let me read off his stats last year 28 doubles 22 home runs so right there you're essentially replacing the extra base hits with Josh Lowe if he does in fact come to fruition and plays how he's supposed to but he had 26 stolen bases and 111 AAA games I mean I was doing my research and I said Josh Lowe is that good so the only confusing part about this is Josh Lowe is spelt the same as Nate Lau, but it's low compared to Lau. So if you're a Rays fan, remember that going forward. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Rays fan or a Tigers fan, what do you make of this move? I'm not sure if Akil Badu is gonna be moved down in the lineup to accommodate Austin Meadows. How I would figure out that lineup is Akil Badu number one, followed by on-base god Robbie Grossman. Then you would have Jamir Candelario or Spencer Torkelson or Jonathan Scope or Eric Haas. Austin Meadows is going to be in there as well. The Tigers, I mean, as a Cleveland fan, this, this is not good for us. Austin Meadows rakes. And then, of course, the Rays get Paredes, the classic 4A player. Can he figure it out? I mean, cross your fingers and let's hope so. So that pretty much does it for the summation of that breaking trade that happened last night. Let's go ahead and move on to some graphics that just continue to confuse me. What is Major League Baseball thinking? Look at the top 10 teams according to MLB. The Brewers... At fourth, now don't get me wrong, I respect the Brewers and I feel like they're gonna be a good team, but considering they're in fourth after not really having a good offseason and also putting the Braves at seventh, I would have not done that, but I'm not running the accounts over on Twitter. Now, real quick, I wanna show a walk-off outfield assist because we don't get to see these often, and it's from Hunter Renfro, who I like to call Hunter Renfro. Line down the right field line, Renfro's gonna make the catch. Trying to tag, here comes the throw to the plate, it's on the back! Game over! What a hose! Why do people run on Hunter Renthrow? I just don't understand it. Now, a few other defensive highlights I want to roll as I'm talking. Your Don Alvarez, it looks like he lost a little bit of weight. He looks more lean, and he's moving better. Look at him in left field making this diving catch over in foul territory. Giancarlo Stanton is one of those guys in the conversation with Hunter Renfro that you should just not run on them as he easily makes this play. It almost looks like he wasn't even trying to throw it that hard and somehow still threw out the runner. And then last but not at least Trevor Story at second base is looking very comfortable. Oh, I really enjoyed watching this. Nick Madrigal versus his former team. He goes liftoff, and uh, I don't know why someone gave him the nickname of Nicky Barrels. I think Nick Madrigal has a point. 7% barrel rate to start off his career, so he is a singles hitter all the way, but still, nonetheless, this was fun to watch going up against his former team. Marcus Simeon hit his first home run as a member of the Rangers, and the reason why I bring this up now is because I wanted to talk about J-Rod and Kelnick. So J-Rod gets on base for Jared Kelnick, and then Kelnick goes yard, so let me know in the comment section down below between the Astros, the Rangers, and the Mariners, also the Angels, I'll throw them in the mix as well, definitely not the A's. Who is your favorite to win the American League West title. I just, J-Rod's gonna be on the team. He's probably playing center field. Uh, Kelnick is gonna be moved to right field, I believe. Now, speaking of J-Rod, I wanna go ahead and show the clip of him being called up. He was in the office with the manager of the Mariners, and it was just a really cool moment. So hopefully you guys enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Remember to save some money. Use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek. I think it's time, William. I think it's time. Bring on the J-Rod show. Your parents are gonna be there well. J-Rod show. He's over.